Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I am so thrilled to have you all here today. Uh, for those of you who are brand new to me, I don't know how many of you are brand new to me, but those of you who are brand new to brand, who are, excuse me, who are brand new to me, let me start that all over again. For those of you who are brand new to me, to me my name is Dawn Fraser. I am a communications coach. Uh, for the past 10 years, 10 years, I've been working with people to give birth to their stories and to use them in, in service of business, personal development. And today we're talking about how you can use your stories in service of a TED or TEDx talk. So I am so thrilled to have you all here today. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about is the way that innovators, experts and thought leaders can leverage their thoughts, can leverage their ideas and actually reframe them. So we can actually figure out what is the best topic or the best issue that I can present to TED for 2023. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm really thrilled to be able to have so many different people from all different walks of life uh, joining us from Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So great to see you all. Uh, make sure that you're hanging out all the way till the end because we will be talking about different ways that you can get private coaching from our group. Uh, so make sure you're hanging on all the way to the end. Um, and make sure that also you are engaging in the chat. I would love, love, love to hear what you all got going on in the chat. So make sure that you are adding those comments and those questions down there. And I am loving, loving, loving the interaction so far. All right, so you all ready to do this? Okay, so here we go. Now, the thing that I wanna to talk to you about today is figuring out our best ideas, okay? This comes from one of, our, one of our people in our community who mentioned that her number one problem with figuring out what she wants to pitch to Ted is that she has a lot of ideas, right? She has a lot of ideas, she has a lot of topics, a lot of things that she could potentially talk about. So today we're gonna to be breaking down a couple of ways to think about your best ideas. Now, this, uh, this example and the work that we're gonna be doing to come, coming from today actually comes from Harvard Business Review. So there's a great article in, in Harvard Business Review about how do you actually take your ideas and find the best ones that you can work with. So I hope that you have a pen and paper. I know I got mine ready over here. Uh, to start taking notes, because I want you to start to think about how are we going to figure out our best ideas, okay? Now, by word, by, by, by example, I want to start off with a little, uh, 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 an example of what happened during the pandemic. During the pandemic, a lot of people got dogs, right? A lot of people got dogs. Uh, people saw this as a solution to the problem of being at home. They saw it as a solution of having companionship, of making sure that they could get their exercise, of having something to do aside from just being at home, looking at a computer screen, right? So there was this big influx of people who were adopting dogs. Now, one of the problems that we're seeing here in 2022, if you're looking at this in some other time, uh, we're now in December of 2022. But one of the things that we noticed in 2022 was that a lot of dogs were now being returned. Right, they're being returned back to shelters. Uh, and so a lot of people who were like looking at the health and well-being of these animals were saying, what is the core, the core problem here? What is the core problem? The core problem is more than 40%, 40% of people who live in the United States have a dog or a companion pet, right? Uh, but during the pandemic, those numbers started shifting up. They started shifting up a little, little by little. But now what we started seeing is that people started giving back those dogs because they're either going back to work or because they couldn't, they couldn't afford the vet bills or they didn't know how much responsibility that animal would need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the example of what happened with dogs and dog ownerships and dog, dog adoptions. I'm gonna look at how we can reframe or how this, this issue was reframed and how this can be applied to you. Yes, you and how it helps to reframe your thoughts, okay? So, so here we go, the dog situation. <clears throat> Give me one quick second to take a quick sip. All right, so, so here we go. So when we realized that there was, that there, a lot of people were returning dogs, one of the first things that we had to do was to frame what the problem was, okay? Anytime that you're looking at anything that you're talking about in public speaking, I want you to first frame what is the main problem, okay? So if we have a box on, on the left-hand side of our grid, the main problem is that people are adopting dogs, but not enough dog, but there's still a, a, like a lot of dogs that still need to be, uh, that, that still need to be adopted. And unfortunately, many people are returning them back, okay? So that's what we have as the main problem that we'll be looking at, 
okay, as, pits, as, a pit, as, as a way of example. Now, what we realized is that we needed to reshape the framing of the problem in order to understand what could be a potential solution, right? So when people who were from the ASPCA or other, um, other shelters started thinking about like, what exactly is the problem that we're having here? They realized that they needed to ask better questions, okay? So if we start off with the problem, you know, the, the, the big problem at the top, the next thing that we want to do is figure out what are better ways of asking what is actually happening? What is the, what are, what are the better questions that we can ask about why this is happening? Okay. So the questions that, 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 that this, that this process uncovered was A, people realized that they didn't have enough money for their vet bills, right? Pets are really, really freaking expensive. B, that they realized that sometimes people didn't have enough money or, or energy to actually take those dogs out for walks or actually like uh, to, to, to take care of them when they weren't at home, right? So they started asking better questions of the people who were there to actually give back their dogs, right? And I know anybody who is an animal lover can definitely sympathize with this problem, okay? So all of a sudden we have this, this problem and now we're looking at different solutions based off of reframing and asking a better question around what can you do about the solution. So the people from the ASPCA and the different pounds started asking, okay, what, what could we do to actually keep you engaged, to keep you to, to, to have this, this animal stay in your house? And some of the families answered, well, we want the dog to stay in our house. We actually want to keep the animal, but we don't have the funds, we don't have the resources. Therein lied a different solution because they started asking a different question. So once we had a different question that we were asking, then we were able to reframe different solutions, right? So what they realized is the ASPCA and people who are adopting pets, what they realized is that they didn't want to have people just give back give back the animals. Instead, what they wanted to do was provide resources, financial abundance, a way for people who have these dogs now to actually keep them in their family. Because ultimately, that was the main motivation. And that, my friends, goes to our why. Okay, so when we break down, like, what are the big problems that we're addressing in society, we want to look at these, these three different chunks of breaking things down. First off, we want to say, how can we restate what the problem is, right? So I, I see you like, for example, right now, my dear, dear friend, Lila is, is on the stream. And, and Lila, I know, deals with relationships and deals with intimacy, right? And how can you actually have better free flowing um, relationships in our lives, right? Now you can imagine that during the pandemic, a lot of that changed. Our access to people changed, our access to intimacy uh, was, was was kind of just everything was like thrown out the table, right? So one of the first things that we want to look at is how do we reframe the problem of X, okay? How do we rethink about this? And many people might call this process brainstorming. Some people might call this process ideation or, you know, um, or idea mapping. Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how to talk about this in terms of the five whys, the five whys, okay? Now, the, the five whys of your particular topic will help you understand why is this an important topic and why is this even happening in the first place, okay? So when, when we think about, for example, the, the, the issue of, of intimacy and, and access to other people and the socialization, right? We saw during the pandemic, for example, that a lot of teenagers were actually really suffering. I mean, many people suffered. I, I know I suffered. I was just like, can I please touch a human being like aside from my brother? Okay. But we want to first figure out what is the main problem that we are looking to address in our public speaking. Thank you so much for the comments, Ed. I see you out there on LinkedIn. Amazing, amazing. Shout out to everybody who's already been part of the Ideas That Ignite team. Loving the engagement, loving it, loving it. Okay, so the five whys. The first thing you wanna do is answer the, 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 the why behind your problem. Why is this a problem in the first place? Okay, why is this an issue? And what does that why mean? So maybe the, the why we're having an issue is because there's a global pandemic. Okay, great. Why are we having a pandemic? 
because there's a lot of people who are, are, are contagious who have germs, okay? So what can you do about that? Now we start to go into the why about why this is important, okay? So why this is an issue, why it is important, why I want people to take action on it, okay? And what we can do about it as a global audience. So you start to you start to see that like asking the questions of why will really help us understand like what it is, what is the core issue that we're really like looking at here. Okay. So start off with the five whys of your topic. Ask yourself, what 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 else does that mean? And why else does that matter? Why else does that matter? Why else does that matter? Okay. We're gonna start to like peel back many, many layers. Of, of your whys. This is the exact same thing that people do in institutions, for corporations and nonprofits. For trying to answer a problem, we first have to ask why is this even a problem? Okay, okay, got it. So I'm gonna put here on our whiteboard, I'm gonna start off with your, with your why, okay? Everybody got that? Your why, great. Now, you're gonna have a couple of reasons why this is important, right? Why you want people to take action and why it's an issue now, okay? Why this is a important, oops, wrong side. Why this is important, why we want people to take action and why now, okay? These are three of the whys that you need to answer as it relates to your topic, your topic, okay? So at the very, very top, you're gonna have your topic. And in today's example, we're talking about dogs. Dogs and dogs that are not being either abandoned or that need to be fostered, okay? Um, now, once we actually come up with the, 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 the why of this particular problem, we wanna go into next this solution space. Okay, the solution space. And what we wanna do when we're coming up with the, the solutions for our why is we wanna like reconsider what each why might lead us to in terms of a different solution or a different answer, okay? So for example, if we're talking about like why, why do we need to have more, um, um, more financial opportunities for dog owners, it goes directly back to why they're getting rid of the dog in the first place, okay? So in this particular case, the families can't afford, they can't afford to have the dog. Okay, so that possibly means that one way to reframe the answer, the answer that you want people to think about goes directly back to giving them financial resources. The financial resources answer the why about why people might be giving away that dog. A second why might be, that they just need to have uh, more time, more time to, to walk those dogs, okay? So maybe the solution that you're proposing is that people find a way to better allocate time within their schedule, dedicated time within their schedule to actually go out and walk their, their dogs and walk themselves as well, right? Okay, so are you all, you all starting to see where, where we're going with this? So you want to first take your, your, your topic, your main topic, then understand the whys and ask the, the whys in at least, in at least five different ways, okay? And then from there, we want to take those whys and start to put that into our solution space, okay? And the solution space is a spot where ideas are going to become magical, Okay. The idea space, or I'm sorry, the solution space is when your ideas are going to become magical, okay? So going back to what I mentioned at the very top of today's stream, I wanna go back to an example from Harvard Business Review that I thought was really, really interesting that showed how companies, how cultures come up with great ideas and how this could be applied to your TED or TEDx pitch, okay? So here we go. So. Uh, the problem that, that, that the people from Harvard Business Review were studying was um, the elevators, the elevators in a particular building. The elevators, a lot of people were complaining because the elevators were too slow, okay? The elevators are too damn slow. So um, what they first needed to do was to reframe 
reframe why this is a problem, okay? We reframe this to say that this is a problem because the wait, quote unquote, is annoying, right? The wait is annoying. We don't have to like wait for these damn elevators all the damn time, right? It's too long. So if you just are in this frame of mind that, you know, like the elevators are too slow, the solution, if you, if you just skip past it, if you go directly to the solution, uh, you might think, okay, all we need to do is we need to install a new lift or we just need to like upgrade the motors or, you know, we just need to improve the algorithm so that they actually like, go to the right floor, it's quicker, okay, right? So we have the problem with slow elevators. Now we have the solution, the immediate solution that people would think about is to like get a faster lift or reinstall the elevators or do something that is, is, is really um, simple in terms of framing that that solution, right? However, what if we first started with reframing what the problem is? Let's reframe what the problem is. Okay, right? So now we're going back into, into our paradigm here. If we reframe it as the issue isn't that the elevators are too slow, the problem is that the weight is annoying. Okay, the problem is that the weight is annoying. And if we want the weight to be annoying, then the solutions, the solution space that we're coming up with, it becomes different. The solutions now could be, well, perhaps we play music, right? Or maybe instead of playing music, we, we put up mirrors, right? Or maybe we install hand sanitizer, right? Because this is different ways of answering what that problem is. The problem isn't necessarily that the elevators are slow. The problem is that the, the, the weight is annoying. Does that make sense? So once we have like a better, we, we reframe what the problem is, we can come up with different solutions. So then our solutions just start to are multiply. Our, our, the solutions and the potential answers start to multiply, okay? Thank you, Farah, for, for, your, for your comment. I, I, I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate any type of feedback and thoughts that you guys are having about this today's live stream, okay? So this is the way that we wanna like to uncover not only better questions, but better solutions, okay? So for example, right now we are on a couple of different platforms. Right now we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook. Now, everybody has seen the beautiful different filters that you can put on yourself if you are on Instagram, right? I could be black and white, I could be halo effect, you know, I could be like shining, I could, there's all these different things, you know, that you, that you can do if you are on Instagram, right? To change your actual image and to change your filter. These are all different filters, but the image, the image is exactly the same, but the way that it looks to the outside is completely different, right? What I want you to think about when you are actually like leaning into your ideas is how to put a different frame or how to put a different Instagram lens, not on your, not on your, on your images, but on your ideas. Okay, we wanna put a different frame on your ideas. So once again, going back to, the, to how this is done, we wanna to go to the whys. If why doesn't make sense for you in your particular situation, ask yourself, what else does this mean? And what else does that mean? What else could it mean? And what else could it mean, okay? So in my particular case, I spoke on the stages of TED in 2012, uh, 20, excuse me, in 2013. The first time I applied was in 2012. Now, the very first time that I pitched to Ted, I thought that the frame, that the answer that I wanted people to think about was that they needed to tell a better story, right? The, the, the moment I was talking about was still relative to something that happened at UCLA with my twin brother when he was injured and had to actually, um, and I, I realized that I was, I was being a bad sport, right? Uh, so my initial pitch, my initial pitch was not that great because I was telling people that I wanted them to think about how to tell a better story and, and, and how storytelling was related to what was happening to this particular moment at UCLA's Drake Stadium as we are both athletes, right? Now, the, the, the solution, like tell a better story, did not directly relate to all the different things that were happening in that particular moment. So... I had to reframe it. it. It wasn't quite adding up. And a lot of times what you might notice is that you might be trying to stick in a solution or something that you know really well into a problem and it doesn't quite mesh up. This is exactly what I was trying to do. 
I, I knew that I was a great storyteller. I knew that I could get people to like use their stories and, and use it as a form of leverage, but I wasn't connecting the dots properly uh, in terms of like all the different meanings and all the different reasons why this was an important issue, okay? So instead, instead what I had to do, I had to look at what it actually meant that I, what I was actually going through in this particular moment. So once I reframed it, I realized that there's three ways that you can actually think about your potential topics, okay? This is another framework I want you to think about. I want you to think about what changed for me? What changed for me internally, okay? In this particular moment of my life, I realized that I was being a bad sport, okay? I realized that I was being a bad sport. So if I was being a bad sport, what does that mean for others? It means that I want others to think about their own sportsmanship. Okay, I wanted others to think about how they were acting in these particular moments. Okay, that's one way of thinking it. The second way to think about it is what changed for you externally? What changed for you externally? Okay, so it's this exact same moment, this is the exact same moment in time. How could be thought about externally in terms of external to, 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 to you, your friends, your family, the other people in the story, other, th- other people that you're talking about? So this exact same moment could be reframed to think about how this impacted my relationship with my twin brother, right? Keep in mind, nothing, nothing about this particular moment changed. Only my frame did. The frame, the lens that I was putting on that story, that changed, okay? That's the second way to think about it. The third, the third way that that I want you to think about this is what changed in terms of your world view? What changed in terms of your world view? Or how did this, check, how did this affect your, your larger, your broader scope of what is happening in the world, okay? For me, what it meant in terms of my world view is I wanted to, people to think differently about those who had special needs, okay? And I wanted them to, to reframe it in terms of those who have special gifts, okay? Now keep in mind, nothing, nothing has changed in terms of this top line in terms of what actually happened, what actually happened in this particular scenario. You can't change the past. We can't change the past at all, right? The past is the past. What we can change is the way that we reframe and we think about this particular topic, okay? So that's what the goal is. We wanna reframe and think about like, what else could it mean? What else could it mean? What else could it mean, right? So I want you to put these three frames on your, on these moments that are coming to mind for you. First, how did it change me personally, right? I realized I was a bad sport. That might be one message. That might be one message that I wanna send out into the world, okay? The second thing, how did this change me externally? How did it change my external relationships to others, okay? That's a second frame, how you might think about your relationships with others. The third frame, how did this change my worldview? my world perspective? How do I think about culture, about identity, right? And it made me think about that larger larger takeaway, how I wanted people to reframe their minds as related to those who had special needs, okay? Now, the interesting thing about my own particular journey with TED is that the very first time that it was published, the very first time that it was published, it was called, it was titled Special Needs and Special Gifts right, going down to our solution. The solution that I wanted people to, to, uh, to come up with was I wanted people to think differently about those who had special needs. That frame, that frame came from that, per, that third perspective, thinking about the larger, broader view. However, however, a couple of years later, the team from TED came back and they're like, you know what? We actually want to re-release your video and the title is going to be redefining what it means to win. Redefining what it means to win, which is much more of a, of a, of a, of a personal takeaway, right? Keep in mind, the talk has not changed. Your experiences are not, from the past, are not going to change. What is going to change is the way that you can reframe them, right? I, I would love to see in the chat, for example, if anybody has ever been fired from a job anybody has gone through a bad breakup, anybody that has like, you know, just like thought that this is the worst thing that could potentially ever happen in my life. And then a couple of days later, maybe a month later, maybe a couple of months later, you're like, 
that actually that actually was was the, the best thing that could have ever happened. That was exactly that was exactly what I needed to happen. I didn't even ever have that experience. Go ahead and put a one in the chat or, the, or like, that, yeah, that's that's me. If you've ever felt this particular way, if you've ever felt like, yo, I I totally have had, I feel you. Yeah, I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and isn't it crazy how like how time can pass and your perspective can change? This, this process of your perspective changing is exactly what I want you to do when you're coming up with your ideas for TED, okay? Because your initial idea, your initial idea might be great, but I want you to go back to the why exercise, okay? So to wrap this up, I wanna give you the, these, these, these two, two and a half frameworks to think about when reframing your ideas. The first one, the first one is the five whys, okay? So you're gonna have your topic or the thing that happened to you you know, maybe it's a story, maybe it's a moment in time that you're thinking about. Uh, reframe in terms of like, why is this important? In other words, you know, what is the problem? How can you reframe that problem? And once you reframe that problem, think about how does this lead us to a different solution? So once again, going back to our elevator example, instead of framing the problem as the elevator is too slow, we started reframing it as like, uh, the problem is that the wait for the elevator is annoying, okay? Now, in, instead of having the solution to the elevator is slow, um, in, in, instead of the solution being that we need to install a new lift or that we need to upgrade the motor, instead, if we have a new, if we have a new I, I, idea about what the problem is, then we have a different solution. We can play music, we can make it more relaxing, we can make it more engaging, right? So this is how we kind of get to better ideas by asking better questions about our why, about our motivation, like what is actually happening? What is the real, the real reason why this is important? This is an issue, okay? So those are the five whys. The other exercise you can think about is the three perspectives, the three perspectives. So similar to, to the Instagram example, I want you to think about how did this moment from your life change you personally? How did it personally change you, right? How did it change your relationship with others? Out, people who are outside of you, your friends, your family, other characters, other people who are part of the story, right? And then the third is how did this change your world view? Okay, so when you go through these exercises, I just want you to start to like, to think about like how you can actually do this, how, how, can, how you can do this better. The best way, the best way that you can do this is by digging into your community. Dig into your community, ask your, ask your, 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 your fellow um, people in your industry, like, what do they think about this topic? Like, you know, does this sound like a good solution? Does this sound like something that people might be like interested in, right? Because what we wanna start to do and what we're gonna be doing in the next, in the next couple of lives is looking at where those ideas, those, those new ideas intersect with what an audience can do and take away, okay? So there's a little bit more to this equation, but the first part of this, of, the, of this equation is coming up with better ideas. And so that's what today's topic is all about, is coming up with better ideas. So if you're interested in, in, in learning more, I definitely encourage you to check out this wonderful article by Harvard Business Review. Um, it's just called, Are You Solving the Right Problems? Are you solving the right problems, right? Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you for the love. I, I, I see you all on all these different platforms. Ah, loving it, loving it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, but also, I wanna make sure that if you, if you are ready to land a TED or TEDx talk in 2023, there is no better time than now to start getting prepared. Because you know what, curators, events are happening. Live events are happening and they're looking for you. They are looking for you. All right. So if you're interested in learning more specifically about how we can reframe your idea, present those best ideas and make sure that you are one of the top candidates for a TED or TEDx talk in 2023. I want you to join me. We're opening enrollment for Ideas That Ignite, my signature coaching program, Ideas That Ignite. Ignite. Oh, I forgot my lighter. Here we go. Here we go. Ideas That What? That What? Ignite. Ah, yes. I know. I'm a little bit silly, y'all. I'm a little bit silly. 
Okay. Uh, but ideas that ignited our co- our signature coaching program last year, like we were we were so blessed to have some amazing representatives take the stag- the stages of TEDx Ocala, TEDx in Syracuse, uh, the TED Global Idea Search, which is a major, major, major program that I'll be talking to you all later on in the year when that comes back up again. But that's exactly how I got on the stages of TED, of Big TED. Okay. And my philosophy is that if you have a stellar application for TED, you're going to be able to tweak that for a great application for TEDx. Okay. So if you're interested in this process, join me, check out ignite.donjfraser.com. That's I-G-N-I-T-E at donjfraser.com. If you are, let's see, we're going to put that banner. There we go. Ignite.donjfraser.com. Have a lot more information for you about our, our, our coaching program. Would love to see what you guys are thinking about, where your passions are, um, like what you're, what you're really trying to accomplish in 2023 as it relates to public speaking and it relates to TED and TEDx. Okay, so I encourage you to join me. Thank you so, so, so much for, for, for joining on the live today. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that there aren't any other questions or any other comments. If you have any other comments, um, feel free to jot those down into the chat now. I'm gonna go double check to see if there's any other comments or any other thoughts. Okay. Okay, great. We're looking good. We're looking good. Okay, great. I just see lots of love, lots of love for for, for both the topic and for what we got going on here. All right, y'all. So this is awesome. If you have any questions, let me know. We'll be doing these lives almost every single day during the month of December. So, um, so if you have any questions, any thoughts, uh, you know, I'd love to be able to answer those questions for you. So thank you for joining. Um, and I hope to see you. Uh, oh, we were just about to, to wrap up, Christine. But, uh, but you know, I, I hope that if you have any other questions or any other thoughts, feel free to, to, to send them my way. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, y'all. Take care. Oh, there's a comment about the dog. Y'all want to see the dog? You want to see a pup before she goes? Oh, she's, she's taking a nap. All right. Maybe next time. All right, y'all. See y'all soon.